Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today I'm taking a look at a blue-white artifact prison deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, built around Cloudsteel Kirin, a 3-mana three 3-2 three artifact creature equipment Kirin from Kamigawa, has flying and can be reconfigured for 5-mana, turning it into an equipment, and then the equipped creature has flying and says we cannot lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. So the goal of the deck is to suit up one of our creatures with Cloudsteel Kirin and protect it at all costs, and if the opponent cannot remove our Kirin, then they also cannot win the game, and at some point will overpower them. So that's our game plan. Now a great way to protect the creature that's reconfigured with the Kirin is to give it Hexproof, and we do that with our Giant's Amulet, a 1-mana artifact equipment, equips for 2-mana, giving the equipped creature 1 additional toughness, and Hexproof as long as it's untapped. When it enters we can also pay 4-mana to make a 4-4 Giant Wizard token that comes equipped to the Giant's Amulet, so that can give us a body if we don't have one already in the late game. So putting a Giant's Amulet on our equipped creature is one layer of protection. Then the next layer of protection comes from Archon of Emeria, a 2-3 flyer that says each player cannot cast more than one spell each turn and non-basic lands your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped. So two very useful abilities, especially in a metagame filled with the Naya runes deck, where Archon of Emeria almost shuts down their entire deck, not allowing them to cast a whole bunch of spells for free in the same turn. It also slows down the pace of the game, allowing us to set up all our different combos, and also plays well with activated abilities, which our deck is filled with so we can still use our mana in a useful manner, even if we're only casting one spell per turn. Then the next layer comes with Jim Gataxius, Progress Tyrant, a 7-mana 5-5 legendary Phyrexian Praetor, saying whenever you cast an artifact, instant or sorcery spell, copy that spell and we can choose new targets for the copy, only triggers once each turn. And it also says whenever an opponent casts an artifact, instant or sorcery spell, counter that spell, and this also only triggers once each turn. So if we happen to have both Archon of Emeria and Jin Gitaxis in play, the opponent can only play one spell per turn, and if it happens to be an artifact, instant or sorcery, that one spell will get countered, so the opponent is unable to really interact with us in any way, other than potentially playing enchantments or planeswalkers. And that's where the final layer of protection comes in, which is just a classic counter spell, saw it coming, can potentially counter something like a Meat Hook Massacre or a Skyclave Apparition, which could otherwise slip through the cracks to still potentially deal with our Cloudsteel Kirin, even if we have all those other layers of protection in place. So that's the basic idea behind the deck. Now looking at some other cards, we've got three copies of Oswald Fiddlebender, a 2-2 legendary gnome that can pay white mana, tap and sacrifice an artifact to search your library for an artifact with mana value equal to 1 plus the sacrificed artifact's mana value and put it onto the battlefield. So Fiddlebender can potentially sacrifice a 2 mana artifact to find our Cloudsteel Kirin, so that gives us more ways to access it, plays very well with cards like Spare Supplies which already draw a card when they enter the battlefield, so we don't feel too bad sacrificing sacrificing them. And then a neat trick with Fiddlebender is that we can even sacrifice our zero mana treasure vault so we can search up a one drop so that can help us find let's say a giant's amulet if we don't have hexproof yet, a portable hole which is our removal spell of choice, exiling an opposing no land permanent with mana value two or less, and then we've got our two copies of Moonsnare Prototype, which can provide additional mana by tapping an untapped artifact we control, can also be channeled to use it as removal, which plays well with our Archon of Amiria once it's in play. Then at 2 mana we also have two copies of Automated Artificer, a 1-3, that can tap to make colorless mana that we can only spend to activate abilities or cast artifact spells, so still helps us potentially reconfigure a Cloudsteel Kirin, makes it easier to double spell until we get an Archon in play. And then we also have one Reckoner Bank Buster, which we can also potentially search up with Oswald Fiddlebender by sacrificing a 1-drop, so we can draw 3 cards with it and eventually turn it into a 4-4 vehicle that can start attacking, crewed by the 1-1 pilot that we get from it as well. And then very important are the Planeswalkers in the deck. We've got two copies of Tesseret Betrayer of Flesh, with a passive ability saying the first activated ability of an artifact we activate each turn costs two generic mana less to activate. And there's a ton of synergies with Tesseret throughout the deck, namely Cloudsteel Kirin can be reconfigured for three mana, 
We can sacrifice spare supplies in the opponent's turn for free to draw a card. Reckoner Bankbuster can also draw a card for free. We can equip our Giant's Amulet for free. So there is a ton of great synergies with Tesseret. Although do keep in mind that if you happen to tap something like Treasure Vault as your first artifact for the turn, that will make use of Tesseret's discount even if it doesn't actually do anything. So always be very mindful if you have a Treasure Vault in play and you want to make use of Tesseret's discount to sequence properly. You can, for instance, activate the Cloud Steel for 3 mana with Tesseret in play while tapping Treasure Vault. It's very weird how that works within the rules, but it does actually work, so just be very mindful of how you tap your mana and sequence your spells. And then the plus one lets us draw two cards and then discard two cards unless we discard an artifact card. Another reason to like Treasure Vault in a mana base as an artifact we can potentially discard. The minus two turns one of our artifacts into a 4-4 creature, and then a minus six ultimate can also draw a ton of cards. And then Teferi, who slows the sunset, is another great addition. As a 4-loyalty planeswalker can plus one, we get to choose up to one target artifact, one creature, and one land. And then we get to untap the chosen permanence we control, and tap the chosen permanence we don't control, as well as gain two life. So with a treasure vault in play, Teferi can essentially make two additional mana with the plus one by untapping a land as our land, and treasure vault as our artifact after floating some mana. Can also help us untap Oswald Fiddlebender, so we can activate it multiple times in the same turn, and by untapping our creature, it can also potentially gain Hexproof again with the Giant's Amulet, so a ton of great synergies just with the plus one ability, and then the minus two lets us look at the top three cards of our library, can put one of them into our hand, the rest on the bottom, so we can find our missing combo pieces, and then the minus seven ultimate also helps us make more mana and draw more cards. And then taking a look at our mana base, already mentioned Treasure Vault a few times as a very synergistic card throughout the deck. Can also be sacrificed to make some treasure tokens to give us a small mana boost. We've got one of each of the new channel lands with Iganjo and Soaring City as interaction. And then two copies of Hall of the Storm Giants as a powerful creature land that can also help us close out the game, even after we've established the lock with Cloudsteel Kirin. Still important that we actually kill the opponent, otherwise it's going to take a while to actually deck the opponent, which is not our preferred win condition. Then we've got some basics, four planes, four islands, and some dual lands with a deserted beach and our pathway. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play, and this hand seems acceptable. Turn one, go for Giant's Amulet, which we'll eventually be able to equip for free thanks to Tesseret. And then we probably want to try and hit our land drops with Spare Supplies. As the Artificer doesn't really help in casting Tesseret on three. Another Archon, so next turn probably play another Spare Supplies. Opponent on an aggressive Red Artifact deck. Well, Archon isn't bad here as it will prevent the opponent from emptying their hand quickly. And then we still have Spare Supplies and Giant's Amulet as Mana Sinks we can use alongside casting one spell. Right, opponent is just going to kill the Archon and play Ronin to grow a Tomaton. Yeah, Archon is quite good against Ronin specifically. So the play might be Tesseret. And then I could animate my spare supplies and put a Giant's Amulet on it for free to give it Hexproof. So we can protect our Tesseret, and then next turn I could uh, maybe play Archon and move the Amulet to it. Could also just sacrifice supplies for free with Tesseret, but I'm kind of liking the idea of having a large blocker. Now of course I could still send the Ronin um, to finish off Tesseret, but then they would lose the Patchwork Automaton most likely. Synthesizer, 
and grows automaton. If they have two more one mana artifacts, I guess uh, we could be in trouble. It's just gonna be the helm. Is there a land too? All right, so they can make automaton a five five now, which does get past our spare supplies. That's too bad. So do we want to lose Tesserets? I don't think we do. So I'm probably jumping here and then we can sacrifice the supplies thanks to Tesserets' ability to still draw a card. So it doesn't actually feel too bad. Yeah, ton of great synergies with Tesseret here. And Ganjo not going to be able to deal with the Automaton. Now, can play... Spare Supplies plus Archon, or maybe Artificer into Archon. And then equip a Giant's Amulet for free. And we have to be careful with Treasure Vault as well here, if we want to play it with Tesseret's passive. I think I start by plusing either way. Okay, Cloud Steel is awesome. Yeah, I think I'm happy discarding Supplies. And then we've got Cloud Steel to prevent losing. All right, so for the sequencing, I don't think I'm allowed to play Treasure Vault this turn if I want to equip the Amulet for free and play both Artificer and Archon. So we'll give Archon Hexproof. Artificer can chum block if necessary and can also potentially help make mana to reconfigure Kirin, although Tazred discounting by two is probably more relevant. Alright, so Ronin's gonna be their only play for the turn, thanks to Archon of Emiria. But they can still reconfigure. So that's how they're gonna try and attack Tazred, I guess. Nope, they're just going face now. I'll, uh probably chump, although let's say we take 10, and next turn I can play Cloud Steel and I can reconfigure it. And then I'm not sure how they're supposed to kill us. Yeah, I'll just take it. Okay, so still probably no need to play Treasure Vaults. Tezzeret can keep plussing. And we'll discard one Treasure Vault. If we tap Artificer, it does count as Tesseret's passive. So again, sequencing here is pretty tricky. But this should work if we play Cloud Steel. Then activate the reconfigurability. Target Archon. And then we only have to pay three mana. And now we can even tap the Artificer. Since uh, Tesseret's discount is already applied. So yeah, even if the Kirin doesn't light up we can still actually reconfigure it. So yeah, now our opponent needs to deal with the Hexproof creature that prevents us from losing the game. So they would need to deal with artifacts directly. Let's say they have an Abrade to destroy the Cloud Steel. They can of course kill Tesseret. And then we just need to make sure not to tap our creature that has the Cloud Steel Kirin on it. So Tazred down. Savor your little victory while it lasts. Portable hole could deal with the automaton. We can start attacking with all of the Storm Giants as well. And we can use the Artificer to pay for it. So, interesting spots. Um, if I want to deal with the Automaton, we do have to pay Ward as well. So I cannot Portable Hole Automaton and Hall, but we could Portable Hole the Ogre Head Helm. And then uh, still attack. That's probably fine. Prevent our opponent from drawing extra cards, which could find an answer to our combo here. Hit 
for seven. And then Oswald Fiddlebender can find more card draw. Could even sack Treasure Vault to get a one drop. And we'll see how our opponent decides to deal with this situation. Would love to find Jenga Taxius as well to lock the opponent out of casting any artifacts. Giant's Amulet's not bad. So I can play that, make a token. And that's my play for the turn. And then probably no need to move anything. Keep Treasure Vault in hand, I think, in case we find another Tesseret to discard it. And then Fiddlebender could sack the Giant's Amulets. Bankbuster is nice too, so that can maybe help us find Jingataxius. Another Cloud Steel is also useful, can potentially be reconfigured onto the Giant so we can start flying over. And then for now, do I need to play a land? No, probably not necessary as I still have enough mana to play Cloud Seal and to reconfigure next turn with uh, what we have available. So even though Archon is hurting us a little bit, it's probably hurting the opponent a lot more. Alright, opponent found a burn spell. But our key creatures have hexproof. And putting us to zero life is not really going to accomplish much. Okay, so we'll play Cloud Steel. Equip the Giants. Now, of course, they could kill the Giant now because it's tapped. It no longer will have Hexproof. But as long as we keep the Archon nice and safe, that's what matters. Play with fire going after Cloud Seal Kirin. Fair enough. That works. Pass it back. A rabbit battery. That's one large patchwork automaton. They could probably attack with the automaton if they want. Just to put us at a negative life total in case they find an answer to the cloud steel eventually. But they're not going to. Keeping a blocker back for Hall of the Storm Giants, I guess, is more relevant. Okay, Teferi can do some stuff, including untapping a lands or untapping a creature after it attacked. So for one mana, there's no removal that kills Archon, so we can ship in for two and then untap it. And then we're probably going to lose Teferi to an attack next turn. So I could also decide to just minus to dig for Jinkataxius, which I don't mind. Right, spare supplies or Fiddlebender. Um, we'll get a spare supplies. Fiddlebender might just be destroyed by a burn spell. Can still draw. Alright. Pass it back. And then Teferi's gonna die. Might decide to finally play a Fiddlebender to get more spare supplies. But yeah, we're not really in a hurry. I'm sure our opponents is gonna have a hard time dealing with the Jenga Taxis if that comes down. 
Otherwise, we're just digging for another cloud seal to start flying over, applying some pressure. Worth saving to ferry here. Alright, they had to play with fire anyway. That's fine. Seen that Double blocking also would have been reasonable. That's red to draw. Keep drawing these cool planeswalkers. Sure. That can plus. And a counter spell is great here. Okay, so we can foretell that and then still cast it, draw with a bank buster. Might want to leave it back to crew. So I'll just pass here. So side coming gives us an extra layer of insurance in case the opponent had an abrade. Against green decks, there's also the uh, channel lane to worry about, Poseju. Luckily, that's not the case here. Blue decks can also have Soaring City to bounce Cloud Steel. So let's activate this, make a pilot, and then we can chum block with a pilot if we want. A double block, again, would have been reasonable if they kill the pilots. I don't really want to have to use my counter spells, so just going to avoid that mess. And yeah, we're halfway through our deck, so at some point we'll find one of our two copies of Jenga Taxius or another Cloudsteel Kirin. And this time we've got a counter spell to protect against an instant speed burn spell, and our opponent again can only play one because of Archon. Alright, our turn. There's a Cloud Steel. Let me start by plussing. Okay, Treasure Vault can go. And then we can play Cloud Steel and equip it for three mana. Now I guess we won't be able to counter in response to another instance because of our own Archon. Cannot cast two spells. So we'll see if they have a response here. Our opponent's got a Voltage Surge. So we cannot cast so it coming because of our own Archon. But we could channel and then put the Cloud Steel back. Which could be reasonable here as it is a relevant draw. Would be, I guess, shields down on side coming, so that's also kind of inherently risky. Alright, I guess we'll let it go then. Pass it back. Alright, Tezzer takes five, might be finished off by another burn spell, but so be it. Or we can use prototype, but then we're shields down, opponent hasn't cast a spell yet. I'll enjoy making you regret this. I guess never mind, prototype would only cost three mana thanks to Tezzeret, so I could have still cast a side coming. Royal Eruption for three, that's fine. Yeah, Tezzeret has just a ton of synergy throughout the deck. Lots and tap, portable hole, not that useful. I guess it can clear the automaton so Hall can start attacking again. Keep Might still be worth it to clear the automaton. And 
then if I were to activate Hall, I can still keep up sidecombing thanks to the treasure. It's going to be play with fire, dealing two damage to it. And then they can trade for the samurai if they want. That's okay by me. So still waiting on Jin. Can maybe crew the bank buster here to uh, chum block with if necessary. Yeah, another voltage surge finishes off Tesseret, sure. My revenge will be cold and sharp. Another sword coming. Not bad. All right, I think it's time for Fiddlebender now. I guess we did put two bad cards on the bottom, so shuffling has its drawbacks, but I've got plenty of uh, artifacts I'm okay sacrificing at this point. Could also find another Cloud Steel Kirin by uh, sacrificing a two drop like Bangbuster. So I could attack with my token and then move the amulet to Fiddlebender. That seems okay. I will say it does feel weird staying in the game at zero life. Don't see that very often. Put on Chum Blocks. And has a Kami's Flare, that's fine. Now we're at minus two. And counter goes on. Ogre Head Helm. Can foretell still. And uh, move the amulets onto Fiddlebender. Okay, pass it back. Still have prototype we can use at any point, but more important to keep up protection. Alright, opponent's finally empty handed. It's gonna get in there with Den of the Bugbear. And do I want to use prototype here? Guess we could bounce the helm, prevent them from drawing with it. Could also crew Bankbuster, tapping both creatures since we're safe to do so now. And then uh, just eat the helm, take a bunch of damage. Yeah, maybe that's better. I would not do this if they weren't empty handed, most likely. Ronan goes back to hand can channel it, but then they're going to be tapped out, so there's no risk of any instant speed removal. Alright, get to untap. We can activate Fiddlebender, get another Cloud Steel. That seems fine. Could maybe play the spare supplies first to draw, actually, before we shuffle. Could also sag the spare supplies itself over the bank buster, but not sure how much I care about 4-4. Uh, Artificer, not too useful. Yeah, let's sacrifice bank buster. Get cloud steel, can equip it. And then we'll have a uh, flying threats. Now I could afford to be more aggressive with my Archon as we now have two creatures equipped with Cloud Steel and two counter spells in hand. So it's probably okay to get in for two here. And pass back. Pona did not channel, so they're happy to keep the Ronin in hand.
Then let's activate it. I guess we'll see how low our light total can plummet here while our opponent attacks us on the ground. Right, just then attacks. Another Fiddlebender, start by drawing. Hall. Okay, uh, do we want to activate Fiddlebender? Could play Artificer, sacrifice it, but we don't have any 3 drops left, so I could play a Prototype and get maybe another Spare Supplies, if there's any Spare Supplies left. And I think there should be one more here, so that seems fine. Still digging for Jinkataxius, don't want to give up on our dream. Sacking the uh, treasure token could also get a 1 drop, and eventually a 2 drop as well, but we'll do it this way. And then still comfortable attacking for 2. Pass back. Even if we run out of cards in library, we still don't lose thanks to our Cloudsteel Kirin. So. It's going to be very challenging for the opponent to fight through all this. Get to untap. Another portable hole. Start by drawing. Treasure vault to draw. Okay, uh, there's no artifacts left to get for us. So yeah, we'll hit for four. Play another Archon. That seems fine. Could move some equipment around since it's not doing much on a tapped creature anyway. Pass back. Attacking with Hall when they've got a bunch of 1 1s on defense also doesn't help much. And our opponent explodes, about to attack for 6 in the air next turn. So yeah, we found all the lock pieces except for Jingataxius, but. Yeah, just Archon, Cloudsteel with a few counterspells just in case they had some interaction for artifacts was good enough. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Can play maybe a Spare Supplies into Archon and then as we play Tezzeret we'll be able to sacrifice the supplies for free. Cloud steel, alright, so starting to assemble all the pieces. Opponent with a turn to Malison, so a dungeon deck. Yeah, I think Archon's still fine. Opponent's gonna fly the Malison, hit us for two, and venture twice. Now, is there any dungeon that can somehow beat our lock? The uh, mine definitely does not. But there might be another dungeon that I'm not thinking of that uh, somehow can make a sacrifice permanent, maybe. For now, can play Tezzeret. And then... I think we'll just draw a bunch of cards. Can discard Artificer. And then sacrifice spare supplies in the opponent's turn, maybe. Not that it matters. As soon as we can block, might as well attack. And then if the Malison goes after Tesseret, it's not going to be venturing. So they're likely going to keep going face. The Rune Seeker lets them trigger an additional time. So they are going to complete dungeons quite quickly with this.
Treasure Vault, fine to discard to the plus ability. No and then could play Cloud Steel Kirin, Fortel Sidecoming. And now I might leave Archon back, so they won't be able to attack with both. And make the Malison unblockable. Their opponent's still limited to casting one spell per turn, so even if they draw a ton of cards, they might not be able to deploy them all. Not darn's a good one though. Pumps the team. And they're probably gonna go for the big dungeon of the Mad Mage now, so they can make treasure, prevent attacking and blocking, what else? Provide card advantage. Yeah, doesn't really interact with us in any significant way. So, cannot attack but we can still use activated abilities. So we can use Kirin for three, and then I could even ultimate Tezzeret here if I want, which does seem worth it. And then we get to keep up Sidecoming if we want. And uh, then Treasure Vault plus Tezzeret's ultimate is also quite the combo. So yeah, let's cash it in. I hope proud of Tap, draw. Now probably don't want to play a Giant's Amulet here and be tapped out. In case of removal on Archon, we could just lose on the spot, so we'll just pass. And then next turn we can play Giant's Amulet to give Archon Hexproof, which I guess we could have done last turn too. Although there's still potential ways they could mess with it, like maybe a Skyclave Apparition exiling the Cloud Steel itself, so keeping up the counter still slightly safer. So yeah, our opponent can pretty much draw their entire deck, but uh, as long as they don't deal with our creature, I'm fine with it. Paladin class would have made Sodcoming one more expensive. But of course they still wouldn't be able to cast a second removal spell alongside it. Opponent's just going off here. Making a whole bunch of skeleton tokens. And Mad Mage to scry three. Keeps all of them on top. Okay, so this turn go for Hexproof. And we'll decline. And uh, yeah, that's our turn. Can still play Sod coming for three mana in the opponent's turn. Apprentice, more venturing. Yeah, at this rate our opponent's just gonna end up decking before we kill them with damage. Paladin class leveled up. So is it time to go through the last dungeon? Not even gonna bother blocking here. Even though I could block a skeleton, just wanna see how lower life total can plummet. Alright, opponent goes for Tomb of Annihilation, anything that matters here. Each player loses two life unless they discard a card. I think we're still allowed to lose life. We cannot pay life if we're at a negative life total, because you cannot pay with something you don't have, but lose to life is different. So that doesn't really impact us. So yeah, once again, nothing that really beats Cloud Steel Kirin.
Now I'm sure opponent has some removal in their deck. That might be able to answer Cloudsteel Kirin. So we still need to keep our guard up. And yeah, getting in with damage is going to be pretty tricky given our opponent is making so many creatures. So this might be a game where we have to actually win by decking the opponent. Which is kind of a long and painful road, but uh, might be the way to go. Alright, so we can start by drawing with our treasure vault here. Get a spare supplies in play, or we can play another Archon or another Cloudsteel. Not sure, I guess getting another Archon and then next turn another Cloudsteel could give us additional redundancy in case they can answer one of them. Gargoyle, that's fine. Now I guess there is the channel lands that they could have. That's I think the main concern right now. And that's also something we cannot counter with Sot coming. So that's why getting a second Cloud Seal Kirin equipped is probably the biggest priority. So again, not gonna bother blocking. Opponent kept the card on top, that's scary. Alright, their opponent explodes, so they must not have had any answers left, and yeah, sooner or later they're gonna run out of cards and lose the game, even if it's not the most flashy win condition. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Just a bunch of removal, card draw, eventually Jenga Taxius. So we might not enact our typical game plan, but seems like a solid hand nonetheless. Against uh, Black White. Guess I can play a Treasure Vault for now. Keep my gun in hand in case we need it as removal. It's an enchantment deck. Don't really want a portable hole companion. Play a spare supplies over Bankbuster. In case they have a way of removing it with like a Rite of Oblivion. Want to be able to at least activate it right away. Uh -huh, so it's the uh, Mardu kind of enchantments deck potentially playing Anvil and Showdown of the Skulls as well. Okay. So this turn, don't have double whites, so cannot portable hole plus Fiddlebender, but we could portable hole plus activate supplies or play Bankbuster. Seems okay. And get rid of one of the tokens in case we end up sacking the portable hole to Fiddlebender so they don't get their companion back. And then we'll probably activate supplies over Bankbuster again in the case of removal. Take one. Another announcement. They are pretty good in multiples. Counter spell. Probably want a double two drop, which means we can fiddle bender bank buster, bank buster draw, maybe foretell a sight coming. Although we're pretty far behind on board, so I don't know if we can really afford to set up our counter spell here. 
I guess going Fiddlebender for Telsat coming is still reasonable. Can block a 1 1 for this turn at least, or force him to use removal. And then, turn after, we could Bank Buster draw a portable hole. Getting close to playing Jinkataxius. Sure. Opponent sends the team. They could have Wandering Emperor here, which would be a reason not to block. How likely are they to have it here? Nah, don't think I play around it. Could just be a Deadly Dispute on Shambling Ghast. Also finishes off Fiddlebender. But now they lost two creatures, so there's a lot less pressure from Wedding Announcement. Which is... Probably good for us here. Okay, so stick to the plan of portable hole, bangbuster draw, and get to keep up sod coming at the same time. Showdown. Seems worthy of a counter spell. Another portable hole. Can draw first and see what's up. Archon. So can portable hole and then play Archon. Although then I might be unable to play Jin next turn if we don't draw an untapped land. Probably still worth it. Opponent's got a bunch of cards in hand. Their deck is a lot of cheap cards. So Archon limits what they can do or forces them to kill Archon. Non-basic comes into play tapped, so it doesn't look like they have removal for it. Alright, we get to play Jin, so we've got our combo here, Archon plus Jin, which means only enchantments are problematic, so Meat Hook Massacre is the main concern. Suppose they could have a Wandering Emperor to exile a tapped creature as well, which is a reason not to attack. Opponent attacks. Probably don't want to crew with Bank Buster. This does look like uh, Meat Hook Massacres being set up. So I just block with Jin on, I guess, Companion. And then they can Massacre for three. Save ourselves a bit of damage. They can easily do it for five. If they do it for three, they can still play something afterwards. Now that Archon is gone but it's probably not worth it to take three damage over. Yep, that's too bad. And yeah, that's also the reason why I'm not playing this deck in ranked, because one of the most played cards in standard happens to be kind of the perfect counter to our two card combo, which is otherwise very difficult to interact with. Now we did draw Tesseret, which is nice. So probably fine to tap Treasure Vault first, and then we get to draw with Bank Buster for free. And take it from there. So I'll start here. Oh, I guess since we already tapped Treasure Vault, it didn't count for Tesseret. Good to keep in mind. Alright, we'll plus... And do I want to discard a Cloud Steel? No, I'll discard the lands instead. At six life, I could see Cloud Steel being important to stay alive. Teferi's excellent. So step one, we'll draw with a Bank Buster while it's free. Then Tesseret could draw. 
And then we actively want to dig towards another counter spell to counter another Meatook Massacre. Play Teferi, and now we're fine tapping Treasure Vault since we've used Desert's discount. Plus, untap Treasure Vault, tap Creature, untap Land. And then I could play Cloud Steel, play Archon afterwards. Although that might be overextending a little bit. Would prefer to be able to equip Cloud Steel right away. So maybe we just go Spare Supplies plus Archon, and then next turn we can play and equip Kirin right away. Seems fine. Got two Planeswalkers that are ticking up, so they've got some things they need to pressure. Opponent's got a card in exile, so I guess that could be a Doomscar. For now, jump with a pilot, maybe. Deadly dispute to draw, that's their only spell for the turn. Okay. So sequencing. Draw with spare supplies for free. Then Tazarets could plus. Although I guess we could also just ultimate here. Yeah, ultimating seems reasonable with two treasure vaults in play. So we'll draw. Draw again. And then we can play a Cloud Steel and reconfigure it. And then Teferi could maybe minus to look for a counter spell. Let's see if we play Cloud Steel, reconfigure. I'll be, I think, one mana short of also casting a Sod Coming if I did find one. Although Teferi is likely going to fall to the tokens attacking. It's probably okay to cash him in. Giant's Amulet's not bad either. Can only cast one spell. So I could go for Giant's Amulet and then move it to Archon. And have a 4-4 blocker on the ground. And then I can also crew Bankbuster if necessary. Uh, there's a Doomscar to reset the board, that's fine. So Teferi could mine us again, looking for Sod coming. Ooh. Okay, never mind. I Gancho Uprising for five. That was unexpected. With triple wedding announcements. That's gonna be enough for lethal here. I can crew Bangbuster, tapping two tokens, but then we're still super dead. Alright, GG's. Yeah, we couldn't find our side coming in time, and our opponent had the Meat Hook Massacre for Jingitaxis, otherwise they would have been able to deal with Uprising as well. Good game. Alright, so we got to see our Cloud Steel deck in action. And yeah, the games can take a long time to complete, so it's not the fastest deck to complete your daily quest with. Also, wouldn't necessarily recommend it in ranked, just because there's a lot of cards that are commonly played in popular decks, like Skyclave Apparition and like Meat Hook Massacre, that can get around Jingitaxis plus Archon. And then we also need to have a counter spell, which is a lot to ask, as we need all those pieces into place to protect our Cloudsteel Kirin, while the opponent can often curve out and go underneath us before we manage to 
set everything up. So again, not the most competitive deck, but yeah, it's definitely a unique style that's also part of magic. So if you like prison decks, you might want to give this one a try. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.